Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, you know it, Juventini, they can't catch a break at the moment. New international break means new sporting disaster in casa Juventus, because you know it, in today's video we'll speak about only one thing, Nicolo Fagioli and the betting case. With the maximum respect, because we are speaking first of all of one of us, secondly because we are speaking about a human being, and then also because we are speaking about a kid of 22 years. Nobody is perfect, and we don't have the entirety of the information. This is important before speaking about the case. We'll speak about what we know from reliable sources. What are the personal problems that Nicolo Fagioli could encounter on an individual level? What are the consequences for Juventus on a club level, what are the immediate solutions that Juventus can find until Mercato of winter, because yes, we will need some midfielders in the winter, first of all, to replace Paul Pogba that has been suspended. And also thinking about what if, and I insist on the word if, Nicolo Fagioli would be suspended until the end of the season or maybe longer. So we have a list of potential players that could reinforce Juventus in January. Maximo of like, if you didn't yet, please be respectful in the comment section. I really insist on that as well. And if you didn't yet, and if you want to, please continue to subscribe on the channel because we start bringing you back to that magical night of the 10th of October where all the Juventini had sparkles in their eyes. I'm speaking about the people of the field, but also the legends. And when the question after the games were asked, Davids, Evra, do you believe that Juventus can win the Scudetto? Well, they were so optimistic, so pumped up that they said, yes, Juventus has possibility to win the Scudetto. Even Del Piero, he opened the door to positivity, saying in a more managerial way, attenzione, step by step, Juventus' first mission to stick there. And then in a few months, if they are able to do that, well, maybe they can dream about something bigger than what was officially publicly stated. You see? I heard these words somewhere. So Del Piero is ready to be a manager in the future. But they also asked the question to the supporters. And the supporters, of course, they were influenced by a, Juvent by a Juventus night, by the legends, by the memories, by the glories, and so on and so on. That a majority interviewed by Tutto Sport, they said, yes, we sincerely believe in the Scudetto. And they added some of them, if we have Chiesa, it will be Scudetto. If we have a 100% healthy Chiesa that can play the game, it will be Scudetto. Well, these words, unfortunately, they were before the notification that I received yesterday on the 11th of October at 8 past 8 a.m. Italian time. Because if people were believing that with Chiesa we, we, can, we could win the Scudetto, probably Chiesa will not be enough because they already took away Paul Pogba from us. Probably he took himself away from that and we are waiting for his defense in the court. But looks like now we have another problem. Nicolo Fagioli. Investigations are opened by the prosecutor of Turin, Giuseppe Chineda, unfortunately. We all know now, we know the face. I will not even put the picture of him because we all know what is looking like Giuseppe Kine, unfortunately, since a few months now, if not since a few years now. Well, they are opening an investigation against the Juventus player Nicolo Fagioli for betting on illegal platforms. And immediately you can read also from a sports face that the player could risk up to three years of ban. Not only sports face, was speaking about it, but a lot of journalists, a lot of media were repeating immediately Nicolo Fagioli guilty, Nicolo Fagioli risking three years of suspension. And this is systematic. This is always the case when we are speaking about Juventus, the papers, the media, they are putting you in first page, immediately kind of telling you that you are guilty, one. Secondly, already putting there the punishment that you will have. You remember? Juventus Serie B for the minus 10 point or for the uh, plus Valenza case for the salary maneuver. Juventus Serie B, maybe even Serie C. Juventus da 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 da. You, it's immediately like that. Putting already the sentence before a player has the right to speak, before the player has the right to defend himself, before that the judges in the court are able to give you what is really happening or a sentence the papers already punished you and this is really italy and i'm not surprised that today i see gazetta dello sport with fagioli fagioli sono guai fagioli problems the midfielder will risk or is risking three years for illegal betting attenzione attenzione because that's really huge 
because you are already giving a sentence. What do we know? First of all, we know that we are speaking, I already told you, about a kid of 22. Nobody's perfect in the world. Betting is something dangerous. It's addictive. It is a sickness. Betting is a huge problem that I wish to nobody. And guys, don't bet. Don't bet. Don't bet because it's really something dangerous. Read online. Before betting, please read online. What are the possible consequences of betting? Because it's really dangerous. Did I ever put some money on a game? Yeah, I did. Like once a year, five euro, 10 euro there, stop. But it's really addictive and it you need medical support. So that's the first thing I want to say. And speaking not about Fagioli, but speaking about the kid himself as a portion that is not representing Juve, I wish really him the best. Why am I able to say that? Because later in the day, the lawyers of Nicolo Fagioli, they went out with betting, Yes, Nicolo Fagioli reported himself to the sport justice. There's been a maximum of transparency and collaboration. He's calm and fully focused on Juventus. So I take the right to speak about the problem of betting because the lawyers, they said, yes, it is true. So the news of the morning that was, of course, everywhere, we have a confirmation that, yes, there is something true. What are the other details that we know with certainty? It's that Nicolo Fagioli took the responsibility to go himself, self-incriminated, and that he has already been heard because the official letter from the lawyers to the prosecutors that Nicolo Fagioli already admitted and self-incriminated himself was on the 30th of August. The other thing that we know is that it will go really fast because from the moment that he is, it is official, you have 60 days to have a judgment. If you know that it was on the 30th of August, well, 60 days, more or less, we are at the end of November. Full September, full October, eh, maybe even earlier, maybe in the beginning of November, we will know the definitive sentence judgment for Nicolo Fagioli and what will happen in terms of what can he risk. We heard this morning from Sport Media said that apparently, apparently, because I didn't hear it myself, but Nicolo Fagioli would have said, Yes, I have bet, and also on football, but not in the teams that I was playing for. Now we have to make a difference. Why three years? And what are the other possibility alternative for the individual player, Nicolo Fagioli? What are the cases that we know? Gianluigi Buffon was someone that was betting in the past. We know it. He admitted it. No problem with that. But he was not betting on football football and this is why he has not and never been banned for betting problems okay what is the contract as a football player football coach or whatever when you are in the football world you can't bet yourself or family members friends close friends of you can't bet for you on Federazione Italiana Gioco Calcio related games so that means Serie A Serie B Serie C and so on you can't bet for UEFA so all the leagues that are part of UEFA, Champions League, but also Ligue 1, uh, Premier League, and also not FIFA. So also not the world of football like World Cup, Euro, qualification game from the national team. So in few words, you can't bet on football on your own sport as you are, if you are an athlete that is part of football. Buffon. No problem, because he was betting according, apparently on other sports, not football. But Nicolo Fagioli, if it's true, that admission that Sport Media said reported this morning, well, he could probably have problems. He could really probably have problems. How long? Well, another example, the biggest scandal of betting in Italy, or the most recent one, was in 2011 with Andrea Masiello. But he was active part of it, because he was betting on the team that he was playing in, and he even scored a non-goal. So really being active in manipulating the result. And he was banned for two years and five months. So when we are going with three years, you have to understand that three years is when you are organizing betting events. When you are organizing betting events, if you are the head, you can go from three years plus. Here we are speaking about a kid that is betting, yes, but apparently not on his team where he played and so that means that he's not directly involved but anyway there are still problems there can be a suspension then the fact that he went himself to self-incriminate it to admit himself that yes he had a betting problem that he did some betting could see the good intention of the player could go towards a less important punishment i don't know what will happen what i know is it will go 
quite fast, where we will know, I hope the best for Nicolo Fagioli, I hope the best for Juventus. Is Juventus involved in it? Absolutely not. Juventus risk 0.0, .0 because here we are speaking about individualities, like for example, Paul Pogba and that testosterone or DHEA, because that's what I heard ultimately problem, positivity test to doping well it's an individuality that is taking responsibility so Juventus should risk 0.0, .0 on that one but of course Juventus is also there paying consequences because if you have already to supply to the absence of Paul Pogba it could be possible that you're also having to supply to the to the miss of Nicolo Fagioli. And if it arrives in the month of November, for example, that they are saying we ban him for the rest of the season, for one year, for whatever, I don't know. Well, you have, first of all, to find a solution immediately. And who can be the solution? Well, it could be Weston McKennie, as we saw in the last game against Torino, that is reinforcing the midfield. Because Miretti at the moment didn't convince at 100%. So McKenny could be there on the midfield with Wea on the right side. And probably also a Cambiaso that will switch giving support to that right wing from the start or from the bench with Ealing Jr. and Kostic. So what could be the consequences? More playing time for Ealing Jr. that we didn't see. Because McKenny will not be on the right side anymore but will be in that middle of the field. That's now temporary. But of course you will agree with me that a midfield of... Locatelli, Rabiot, McKenny is not the one that you were all dreaming for. Even if they can do well and they already showed it against Torino, it's not the one that you were all dreaming for. Can it be okay for one game a season? Maybe yes, but what happens when we have an injury? We didn't test yet, we didn't test yet Hans Nicolucci Caviglia, that I really hope that we can see as fast as possible because I believe in the kit. But of course, if you are saying we are competing for the Scudetto, probably you miss something in that midfield. And that's why on Tutto Sport First Page today you see Juve Urgenza Turam. It is an emergency now, Turam, that is, according to Tutto Sport, the first real objective of the Bianconeri. We spoke about the dream Kefren Turam all summer long you know that it was the player that i really wanted at juventus at the end it didn't happen we accepted it we said it cost a lot of money at the moment it's not possible of course we had that capital increase that is giving us a bit of breath but don't forget that it's a player that is playing at nice nice is doing quite well in league and this season it's a player that is, is really i believe third or fourth season already with nice player that is growing year after year after year, a player that I would love to have, but it will be expensive because the price is as starting to be really high. Now at the moment, Nis is asking for 40 million euro. Will they give him available immediately in the winter? I don't know if even if Juventus will really try to go for that player. Gazzetta del Sport is speaking and insisting on another big player because they're speaking about Hoiberg, the player from Tottenham. So you have on one side Tutto Sport insisting on the first player Turam, even if difficult, in January with a lot of money, 22 years old. Gazzetta is going with an easier target according to them because the player from Tottenham is 28, is not playing a lot, but attenzione, in January there will be that uh, the African Cup and a lot of players will go away they will not play for the month of January and two players from Tottenham in the midfield could go with the African Cup and Hoybier could see more playing time with the English team so will it be easy to go for that player I don't know with a value of 30 million euro that Juventus is considering too high for a player that is 28 already a player that is not even playing as a starter as Tottenham so we go with alternatives who are the alternatives to to him uh, I wrote them down let me check um, we have Kefren Turam, I already told you. Hoybier, I already told you. But there are two names that we have to monitor. Manu Kone from Mönchengladbach, 22 years old. And then we have Samartic, 21, from Udinese. Samartic, we know him a bit more. Less expensive. There's been about 20, 25 million euro. You could possibly insert some player in the deal what we always do in uh, in Serie A with play with teams like Udinese but on a feeling I'm thinking that probably Manu Kone is the most easiest one to go and not the worst one because it's a player that we don't know that much but 22 years mentioned Gladbach already some experience not as expensive as Turam a player that could be easier to take at Juventus pay attention to Manu Kone 
easier than the other ones. I know that people will tell me, we want Samar Siege, we want Turam. Same as me, Turam and Samar Siege are my favorite ones, but attention to Manu Kone. What about the other players? Well, Arthur Vermeeren from Antwerp, 18 years old. Habib Diara, 19 from Strasbourg. Mamadou Dia Diwara from Lyon, 18 years old. Ryan Cherki, 20 years old from Lyon. Great, fantastic players, but probably impossible to go for them thinking that they will be the solutions to replace an Pogba and possibly a Fajoli. So concentrate yourself on the first four names for the winter, Turam, Kone, Samartic, Joyberg. Pay attention to Kone a bit more than the other ones. About the other names, could be solutions for the future of, uh, of midfield. Then I heard another name. Because when I was reading Tuto Spoil this morning, I heard about a possible comeback of Bernardeschi. Gazzetta dello Sport, Juve, Pogba, stop, and now Fagioli is at risk. On top of Hoibier, there is Bernardeschi. The Bianconeri are planning two players for January. Bernardeschi is the B plan of Berardi. My friends, I know it's international break. I know that we have bad news after bad news after bad news. I understand everything you want to. I'm expecting even in the, another international break, another bad news. But if you're telling me Bernardeschi, with all the respect for the guy that always respected and spoke well about Juventus, I got see, what are we speaking about? If you can't have Berardi, you, you don't go for Bernardeschi. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know how to comment that news. I have a, I don't know. You know, we are speaking about the player that was about to leave Toronto to go again in really low middle, ta middle teams in Serie A. We are not speaking about the player that could reinforce Juventus. Ragazzi, we have to, to stop with thinking about the past, being linked with players with the past. And I like the... He's a nice guy. I, I have no problems with the person, Bernardeschi. But seriously, do, do we even have to speak about... Do we have to comment? I don't know. I don't. There are some things that are not working in the world. And, and Bernard Reschi at Juve, with the immense talent that he has, and I'm sure about it that we saw at Fiorentina, he didn't work out. And it's a bit like Antonio Conte to Napoli. You know, Chaos Napoli, De Laurentiis was about to sack Rudy Garcia. He was thinking about Conte. Di Marzio was asking him the question during the party of Juve, will you go to Napoli? Ragazzi, but if you, are, if you know a bit, there are things that are impossible to work for. Conte already denied on Instagram. He said, no, I don't want to go to Napoli. There are some big teams that are on me. Yes, but at the moment, I want to stay with my family. But ragazzi, are you serious? Antonio Conte and Aurelio De Laurentiis together in a team. It's impossible. There, some things are just not working. So I don't even understand why De Laurentiis was thinking about Conte. It's, imp it's just impossible. Conte wants to be the boss, the leader, his way or no way. And it's the same for De Laurentiis, a guy that is taking all the credits when he's going well, and when he's going bad, he's putting the blame on, uh, on the other one. So, impossible, it, it can't work. So anyway, ragazzi, we spoke about Nicolo Fagioli, we spoke about the midfielders. I was a bit confused at a certain moment. So uh, let me know what uh, your favorite midfield would be. Let me know your state, your emotion. Again, always with respect. That's something that is fundamental on the channel. Grazie, forza. Juve.